Hey there, welcome back to The Fine Line Between Stupid and Clever, and this is a follow-up video to my epoxy guitar video. I love this epoxy guitar. I poured it, and I, I've got a mold. I can pour, it as, pour as many of them as I want. But um, this thing is about 10 and a half pounds. It's just too heavy to be really uh, useful. And I've been thinking about some fun design elements where I might be able to put this guitar on a diet, cut some of the epoxy out of it, and maybe do some fun design stuff with it. So take a look. I hope you enjoy it, and um, thanks for watching. So here we go to start with, before I take any material off, we got 8.1 pounds for the body. Here's the concept. I'm going to take Forstner bits, like I did on this scrap piece of epoxy, and I'm going to hog out uh, deep holes into the body and then fill or line the um, holes with some colored epoxy uh, with alcohol inks. This should make for an interesting effect. So I started with four, uh, really two and an eighth inch of my biggest uh, Forstner bit di um, holes. And they came out really well, really nice. So I'm pretty pleased with those. Um, now I'm gonna take a bunch of other sized Forstner bits and fill in the spaces around them and uh, at different depths as well to make them a little bit different. Okay, so I went to town on this body here with about uh, seven different Forstner bits, all drilling down to different levels. So some of them are really deep, some of them are really shallow, but I wanted to fill the whole body with uh, spaces. And uh, this is the backside uh, where I actually drilled from. And I think it turned out great. The best part about it is it now has lost about two pounds. So it initially weighed in at eight pounds and now weighs in at six pounds. And that's going to make the guitar itself about the same weight as my uh, Les Paul over there, that blue Les Paul with the Bigsby on it. It will be about the same weight. So anyway, um, what I really love about it is on the top of the guitar, I, you know, maintain the integrity of the top of the guitar, but then it creates this really cool 3D pattern with the different depths of the Forstner drills. And now I kind of like it the way it is. I got half a mind just to leave it like this without taking the next step. But I got this bug in my ear still that I want to add some color to it. So I love the, the side view is kind of cool too. Now, how am I going to do this? So my test piece here, I mixed up some just small amounts of like three uh, mill, milliliters at a time of epoxy and added alcohol inks. And I've got this box of 20 different colors to play with of alcohol inks. But what I found was um, you would expect that the uh, scratches in the epoxy made from the Forstner bits would uh, create kind of a diffuser, light diffuser kind of haziness or... Uh, um, like a, a light lampshade kind of thing but actually when you fill in the epoxy even with the colored epoxy it fills in all those tiny little scratches and and the epoxy becomes translucent again so um it's going to kind of have this interesting i, th I think i'd like to try that out and it'll kind of have this interesting kind of uh varied uh colored bubbles appearance the other thing i'm thinking about doing is on the walls of each of those little cylinders is i've got some um uh, fluorescent glow-in-the-dark epoxy uh, powder that I can mix in and paint the walls with glow-in-the-dark epoxy for the outside so that when the lights are off it should create this interesting kind of glow pattern behind the floating colored bubble. Okay so I've got my West Systems epoxy uh, sitting here and I'm gonna <clears throat> pour out little amounts uh, about three milliliters at a time using some syringes. Here's all my uh, alcohol links. I got this random assortment of stuff. I got four different colors of blue. I got a couple of greens, a couple of yellows, about 
two reds only. There's an orange, uh, then so there's some even some silver and gold and rose gold and fuchsia and purple. It's going to be an interesting mix. And obviously, depending on how much alcohol I add to each mix, there's going to be a uh, variation amongst uh, each mix that I use. So uh, I've also broken up a bunch of stir sticks. I got some Dixie cups. Uh, I think I'm going to start on the actually even the pickup cavity. I'm going to add some color to the bottom of the pickup cavity. And I'm actually going to add some color to the bottom of the neck pocket just a very, very thin layer, not enough to change the, you know, dynamics of the thumb. So we're going to take our time, enjoy the day, uh, making up little batches of epoxy and seeing this thing turn into some color. So my first attempt, I realized a couple of things. If you're just uh, coating a, a long flat surface, it really, the epoxy has to be built up to a certain depth in order to gain any of the color. So even this is the uh, heavily stained um, epoxy just by running my finger across the scratches on the neck pocket. Yeah, I didn't get any blue color in that, but look how much it cleared up the scratches in the epoxy. It fills up all those uh, scratches and it becomes translucent again. So that took a little bit of time. I got 14 different colors in all over that and um, a lot of mess of mixing up cups and stuff, but I'm really pleased with it. I can't wait for it to cure so I can turn it over and see what it looks like uh, tomorrow. So here's the guitar after letting it cure overnight, uh, viewed from the front with the floating bubbles of all different levels and dimensions. I'm really pleased with how this came out looks pretty cool even on the inside on the side view you can see the kind of three-dimensional focus of it um, i am going to try and clean up the control cavity here and put a clear coat of epoxy to kind of uh, clean up all of those scratches and things and i have to re-drill my holes for the uh, tone and volume knobs as well as the the jack but uh, I then think I'm going to put it and polish the whole thing. Uh, so I'm getting close to the end here. Looking forward to get it wired up with my uh, electronics. And we'll see how she plays. But really pleased with that effect. So I went back with a paintbrush and just a little bit of epoxy. Um, painted the inside of the vertical surfaces of uh, one of these drills. And the difference between a uh, epoxied uh, surface and the non-epoxy surface is pretty dramatic. That blue one is has not been painted yet, and this orange one's been painted. It kind of gives it almost like a, a frosted glass, like an ice appearance. So I've changed my mind. I am going to go back, and I am going to do all... There's another one that I painted. I'm going to do all of the uh, discs uh, and the vertical surfaces of the drills with a little uh, paintbrush and epoxy to, to keep that effect a little bit more reflective. So here's the final version. I got it all strung up and with a uh, Seymour Duncan P-Rail pickup and a single volume, single tone control with the jack right there. Uh, I'm going to do some kind of slow panning around the body so you can see how the effect, of the 3D effect of the um, drillings worked and actually kind of looking at it from the side is kind of fun because you can see the different depths there. I think putting the... Uh, epoxy on the vertical surfaces just to clear it up uh, made, makes for a lot more light reflection and I'm very very happy with that that came out really nice um, so there's just all kinds of every angle you look at it shines a little bit different I used all the colors that I had 14 different colors including brown which that's a brown one right there that actually still kind of looks pretty cool um, I'm not going to do a playing demonstration of it because, number one, I'm not that great of a guitar player, but two, it's, a, it's just a good sounding normal humbucker guitar. Um, I'm looking forward to breaking this out at a gig sometime. And there you have it. Thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll come up with something else soon. Take care.